Hello, and welcome back to Homegrown Theatre Camp. I'm your director, Mackenzie, and today in rehearsal we will learn about the play that we're making, find where we fit in the script, and discover the given circumstances and the magic if. This week we are staging the classic novel Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. This version adapted by Katie Evans. If you don't have the script yet, you can download it and everything else you need for the camp in the first link in the description below. This is the first of four rehearsals that we'll have together. And after those, you'll perform the play for your families at home and you can share it with your friends on social media. So grab your script, your camp outline, and let's get into it. Before we jump into the play, let's learn the story behind Alice in Wonderland and the Victorian era. For that, we go to the fanciest person I know, who also happens to be the one who adapted the script, Katie. Ah, oh, yes, come in, come in. I have been expecting you. Please, please, sit down. I trust you found your way down the rabbit hole here quite smoothly. Yes, well, you're probably, oh, tea? Yes, okay. How rude of me, my apologies. Now. You're probably wondering why I invited you here today, and well, the answer is quite simple. A little white rabbit told me that you're interested in putting on Alice in Wonderland at home, and well, I am awfully excited for you. You see, there's a few things I have to let you in on first before you can get started. Now, before you can put on a play, you simply must know a thing or two about it, and well, lucky for you, I know a thing or two, so settle down while I tell you a story. It was a sunny July afternoon in 1862 when a fine gentleman named Lewis Carroll was on a boating trip with three wonderful sisters known as the Lindell sisters. And it was when the middle child, Alice, challenged Lewis to write a story, the most entertaining story he could, and tell it to them right then and there. And well, Lewis simply could not back down from a challenge, so... Alice's Adventures in Wonderland was born, and by 1864, the entire world had a manuscript of this wonderful story. And don't mind my pun, because you see, another interesting fact is that in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, a common theme was known as Victorian humor. And in Victorian humor, a fantastic element was puns, as well as references and songs sung by schoolyard children. Now, another interesting... Would you like some tea? Please, would you like some? No, no. All right. Another interesting fact about this time period when Lewis was writing was a very hot topic of conversation was Darwin's theory of evolution, which in summary is basically the idea that one animal over a long period of time would evolve into a brand new animal. So you may ask yourself, why are there so many phenomenal, fantastic, whimsical creatures in Wonderland? Well, there's your answer. You see, would you, oh, would you like some, please, please eat as many as you can. That dormouse simply can't get enough and I'm trying to get him on a diet. But you see, back to my story. Lewis was currently a teacher at Oxford University at the time. So evolution was on the daily when discussing with his students. So he simply couldn't keep it out of his wonderful story. And while of course there's so much more I could tell you, we've unfortunately run out of time. But there's a very special reason for that. You need to get to rehearsal, so go, be off, drink the tea, eat the cakes, grow in size, grow your creativity, even while I'm home. I simply can't wait to see it. Be off, be off. I wish you luck. Equipped with some background information, at this moment, we're called on our own adventure. To my desk, in my room, so we can take a glance at the scenes in the play. Homegrown Theatre Camp presents Alice in Wonderland, based on the novel by Lewis Carroll, adapted by Catherine Evans. The play begins with Alice on a riverbank. They see a rabbit hop by and follow him down his rabbit hole. Once on the other side, Alice looks through the keyhole of a door and sees a garden. Alice then drinks a potion so they can fit through and gets to the garden. In the garden, Alice finds the rabbit, looking for his hat and gloves. Alice tries to help him find them, but loses the rabbit. Then she meets the Cheshire cat and asks them for help. The cat is tricky 
and gives Alice a choice to go see the March Hare or the Mad Hatter. Alice picks the March Hare, but as she goes down the path, she finds the Mad Hatter at their tea party. Alice tries to enjoy the tea party, but becomes frustrated by the Hatter's wriggles and silliness, so she moves on. Finding the Queen, playing croquet. The Queen insists that Alice joins in, and when Alice is fortunate enough to win the game, the Queen orders, off with their head. As the Queen's soldiers close in around Alice, she closes her eyes and finds herself once again on the riverbank, safe and sound. That's the story. Let's figure out where you fit in. To decide which character or characters you'll be playing, consult the script, which has a casting guide on the first page, and have a conversation with your co-stars. If you're performing the one-person version, you don't need to worry about this, as you'll be playing all the characters. But for those of you in the two to five person versions, make sure that when you're deciding who's playing who, you don't get hung up on little things like the character's gender or other details about them. Just pick a character that you'll have fun with. Once you have your character set out, the real fun begins. And you can read through the script out loud while taking notes. If you get any ideas for your performance while reading through the script, make a note of it and tell your castmates about it afterward. If there's any words that you find that you don't know or you're unfamiliar with, you can look them up and write the definition down on the page where the words appear in the script. Once you have your read through done, you're ready for some character analysis. And now our cameras are overheating, so we're gonna go in the gazebo. Last camp, we talked about objectives and super objectives and you should find those for your characters in Alice in Wonderland 2. But we're also gonna go a little bit deeper in this camp. As you read through a script, there's certain details that you wanna take note of so that you can have the most information to make a grounded and strong performance. These details are called the given circumstances. The given circumstances are, put simply, the circumstances given to a character by the script. That could be the character's surroundings, the time, the place, or the character's stated past and the, their relationships with other characters. So, for instance, let's look at the given circumstances provided by the first line in Alice in Wonderland. Once upon a time, there was a young child named Alice who was visiting a riverbank with their older sister on a dreadfully boring day. So the given circumstances provided by this line are that Alice is young, Alice has an older sister, and they're visiting a riverbank on a dreadfully boring day. By knowing the given circumstances that a character has, we can understand better who that character is and why they take the actions that they do. After working with everything that the script has to give you for given circumstances, you can take your character analysis even further by using the magic if. The magic if refers to the question, what would my character do if they were in this particular situation? So by coming up with imaginary situations to put your character in, you can test your analysis of that character by figuring out what they would do in each of these situations. So for instance, what would Alice do if they were lost in a city? Or what would Alice do if they were in an argument with their sister? Test your character analysis with these questions for all of your characters, and you'll be well on your way to a great performance. Both Given Circumstances and The Magic If come from the work of theater practitioner Konstantin Stanislavski. No, Konstantin Stanislavski. Konstantin Stanislavski, it seems right. If you're interested in his work, I encourage you to do research into his system of acting. Stanislavski, he's a pretty smart guy. Next comes the second part of rehearsal, your independent work. Each day, after the video, take what you learned and put it to work while rehearsing with the script. This should take at least an hour, as you want to make sure that you're fully ready for your performance at the end of the week. You can re-watch and pause the video to help guide you through your independent work, and make sure to do all the exercises in the camp outline. We've included a list of props and other technical elements at the end of the script. You can look at this list and start making and gathering these props now so that you don't have to rush after the tech video on Thursday. Now you're ready to tumble into Wonderland. You can decide who you're playing in the script, do a read through, and analyze your characters using the magic if and given circumstances. 
If you're really daring, you'll start rehearsing your play on your feet today and playing with your character's physicality. I will see you tomorrow when we start blocking. Until then, good luck and learn your lines. Thank you for watching Homegrown Theater Camp. You can subscribe to join the cast and download the script from our website. Homegrown Theater Camp is produced by Blixed Locally Grown with support of the Nebraska Arts Council, the Nebraska Cultural Endowment, the Pearl Francis Finnegan Foundation, Union Bank and Trust, and generous individual donors.